we go over now other questions show that x is equal to zero is a solution to the equation and find the other two solutions okay now how are we able to show that x is equal to zero is the solution to this one well if we've been given an equation like this this is a matrix so we need to find the determinant so the determinant of this matrix one of them should give us x being equal to zero and then we can now find the other two so when you want to find the determinant of a matrix what you do is we're going to get this value which is here that is x minus one okay and then we're going to remove this and this the matrix which remains here find its determinant so how do you find the determinant of that matrix which remains multiply this and this and then the answer that you find subtract the product of this and this that is how we find the matrix of a two by two of a the inverse of i mean the determinant of the two by two so i'm going to multiply this and this that is going to give us x plus two x minus four and then minus the product of this and this four by one that is just a four and then the next we just get four the way it is i mean we we get four but we change its sign so the middle one here always change its sign it becomes negative four so we remove the row and the column where negative four is so this removed this removed the matrix which remains having these elements we find its determinant that's a two by two matrix and how do you find the determinant multiply this and this and then subtract the product of this and this okay so that is going to be one times x minus four which is just x minus four and then minus this by that that is going to give us 2x minus 4 and then we get this number which is here don't change its sign negative 1 remove the column and the row the matrix which remains with these elements find the determinant 1 by 4 is a 4 minus the product of this okay so 1 by 4, that is a 4, minus the product of 2x minus 4, and then x plus 2. So this is going to give us x minus 1. Okay. And then x by x, that is x squared. x by negative 4, that is negative 4x 2 by x that is positive 2x then 2 by negative 4 that is negative 8 then we have got a negative 4 here and then minus 4 outside okay what is inside here x minus 2x that is going to be negative x and then negative 4 minus negative 4 that is going to be a zero so it will just remain negative x then minus one here we've got four minus we multiply this two x by x that would be two x squared two x by two that would be positive four x then negative four by x that would be negative four x negative four by two that is negative eight Now we've been told that this is equal to zero. So the determinant is equal to zero, so we need to equate the determinant to zero. So this would be zero is equal to x minus one. X squared negative four x plus two x that is negative two x. Negative four, negative eight, that is negative twelve. And then negative four by negative x that is positive. 4x then we've got negative i can multiply this negative by 4 inside it becomes negative 4 and then this same negative by this one becomes positive 
okay and then i can simplify what is inside that is 2x squared 4x and 4x cancels minus 8 so this will be 0 is equal to x by x squared to be x to the power 3 x by negative 2x that will be negative 2x to the power 2 then x by negative 2 of that will be negative 12x and then negative 1 by x that will be negative x squared negative 1 by negative 2x that will be positive 2x negative 1 by negative 12 that will be positive 12 and then we have got positive 4x outside negative 4 then positive 2x squared then negative 8 okay so this will give us 0 is equal to negative 4 minus 8 that is a negative 12 and then that negative 12 and this positive 12 will cancel out and then we've got x to the power 3 this is negative 2x squared this is positive 2x squared they are going to cancel out and so what are we going to remain with is just negative x squared and then we have got negative 12x plus 2x plus 4x okay so 2x here and 4x that will give us 6x 6x minus 12x that will be negative 6x so that is it now at this point i can factorize out so I'll say x will remain with x squared minus x minus 6. This is going to be equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 0 or x squared minus x minus 6 is also equal to 0. So for this one, hence shown. So for the first one, we have shown that x is equal to 0 as the question has asked. Now to find the other two solutions, we are going to use this one so let's go on and solve that equation so being given x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0 here the product is negative 6 the sum is negative 1. Two numbers to multiply to give us negative 6 and to add them they give us negative 1. That's a negative 3 and a positive 2. So this is x minus 3 and then x plus 2 is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to 3 or x is equal to negative 2. Those are the two other solutions. Alright. Consider this one. Obtain the term independent of x in the expansion of this one. So that term which we don't know is just call it rth term is going to be equal to the power for this uh, expansion is 9. Here we are going to say r minus 1. Okay. Because whatsoever the value of r, if this is the fourth term, then we are going to use a 3 here. If it is the seventh term, we are going to use a 6 here. It will always reduce by 1. So we get the first term in the expansion that is 1 over 3x then we subtract these two that is 9 minus r minus 1 becomes the power then we get the second term in the expansion that is 3x squared divided by 2 and then the same number in the denominator becomes the power n minus r 9 minus r in this case so this is 9 r minus 1 i can Okay, before I even split them, I'll first simplify. Negative by r, it will be negative r. Negative by negative 1, be positive 1. That positive 1 plus 9, that will be 10. And then negative r. Okay. And then we have got 3x squared divided by 2. Raised to the power 9 minus r. I'll make sure that x is alone. So I'll say this is 1 over 3 raised to the power 10 minus r and then 1 over x so i make x alone to the power 10 minus r then in the other one i'll say 3 over 2 9 minus r and then x squared also to the power 9 minus r so this will give us 9 r minus 1 1 over 3 
10 minus r 1 over x 10 minus r and then 3 over 2 9 minus r then x okay 2 times 9 here is going to give us 18 actually this is not a 9 I don't know why I've started writing 9 okay for this second one what we are getting is r minus 1 so we don't get both sides the same here it is r minus 1 so I just don't know where it's all coming from so this is r minus 1 which we have split now 2 by r that is going to be a 2r and then 2 by 1 that is going to be a 2 because when you've got a power and another power just multiply those powers okay now this same one we have we are going to only be interested to the portion so x with which is in the denominator the power we are going to equate it with the power of x in the numerator so that means 10 minus r should be equal to 2r minus 2 so taking r this side and 2 this side that will give us 10 plus 2 is equal to 2r plus r 2r plus r is 3r 10 plus 2 that is a 12 so divide both sides by 3 so r is going to be equal to 4 okay that is the value r is equal to 4 now which term is independent of x which term so we're going to go on and say uh, in this case instead of saying rth term we're going to say fourth term is equal to the power of the expansion is 9 because it's a fourth term we're going to use 3 here because we said it's r minus 1 and then we write the first term in the expansion that is 1 over 3x raised to the power n minus 9 minus 3 i mean what power is that? That is a 6. And then we write the second term in the expansion that is 3x squared divided by 2. The one which is the denominator here, I mean not the denominator, but the one which is down the combination becomes the power. So 9 combination 3 means 9 factorial divided by 9 minus 3, that is 6 factorial. And then this same number here. We put there okay and then we have got I can expand this power 6 1 to the power 6 is still 1 in the denominator I've got a 3 to the power 6 and then x to the power 6 and then times here we've got 3 to the power 3 and then x is squared to the power 3 that becomes x to the power 6 in the denominator 2 to the power 3 so we see that this and this cancels out. That's why we are saying that term is independent of x. Now, 9 factorial means 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 factorial. And then divided by 6 factorial. Of course, the 3 factorial is a 6. Okay. And then times, we have got 3 to the power 3 divided by this 3 to the power 6 I can write it as 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 to the power 3 it's the same and then times we also have 2 to the power 3 which is 8 so this number cancels out with this one and then the 8 is going to cancel out with the 8 6 factorial cancels out to 6 factorial 3 times 3 here is a 9 cancels out with 9 there so on top we've remained with a 7 in the denominator we've remained with 6 and a 3 here 6 times 3 is 18 okay so this is going to be 7 over 18 
so that is it that is the term that is in pendant effects in this expansion let's continue that this one find the values of a b c and d given that 3 minus 2x to the power 3 over 2 minus x x squared plus 1 is equal to that well the thing is we are just decomposing this one into partial fractions so what i can do is i can first expand what is in the denominator because this is an improper fraction we are going to see why so 2 multiplied by x squared that is going to be 2 x squared and then 2 multiplied by 1 that is simply a 2 the negative x multiplied by this negative x to the power 3 negative x times 1 that is going to be negative x so because there is power in the denominator is power 3 even on top is power 3 when they are the same that is an improper fraction or if this the, the highest power of the numerator is bigger than the one in the denominator then that is to an improper fraction so what we are going to do is we are going to use long division to make sure that this is a proper fraction so what is on top i'm going to write it here i'll start with the negative 2 x to the power 3 and then write the positive 3 even this one i'll start with the negative x to the power 3 in reducing powers going to 2x to the power 2 and then going to negative x and then to positive 2 okay so i'll say negative x to the power 3 into negative 2x to the power 3 the answer is a 2 and then 2 multiplied by negative x to the power 3 to be negative 2 x to the power 3 2 multiplied by 2x to the power 2 that to be positive 4x to the power 2 2 multiplied by negative x that will be negative 2x 2 multiplied by 2 that will be a positive 4 now make sure that I write this in order so this positive 3 I will remove it from here and I'm going to put it here positive 3 so that means here we don't have anything in x to the power 2 so I'll just put 0 x power 2 we don't have anything in x or put 0x just to make sure that each term has got its other term with a which are common okay negative 2x power 3 minus negative 2x power 3 that is going to be a 0 0 minus 4x squared that is going to be negative 4x squared then 0 minus negative 2 x that is going to be positive 2 x 3 minus 4 that is going to be a what a negative 1 okay so this is the remainder which remains we can no longer take this one again into this why because the highest this is having a much bigger power than this one okay so we're going to end there so remember it has gone there two times the two we can see on top there so that means this is the same as two that is how many times this one went into that and then plus the remainder we found is this number written down negative three x squared plus 2x minus 1 and then divide by the same thing that you are using to take into this is the thing okay but it's the same as this one is just that for this one i factorize so i can write the one which is factorized for this one i expanded i mean so this is the same as 2 minus x then x squared plus 1 so i can well as well decompose this so this is going to be 2 plus i'll go in the denominators i've got first 2 minus x and then plus x squared plus 1 since i only have x in the denominator on top i can put a b but here because i've got x squared because there is a squared on top i need to put something 
in the form cx plus d or bx plus c or we always need to put something that contains an x and a constant whenever we've got something squared so that means we've already found the value for a a is already found as what as a 2 now our aim is just to find the value of b and d c and d so what we do it is this one which we have expanded which we've broken down i mean into those so it's the one which i'm going to get and equate so i'm going to say negative 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 divided by 2 minus x x squared plus 1 is equal to this portion okay like this one is equal to this because it's the one i've broken so is equal to b i can as well match this as a single fraction b multiplied by this we're going to give bx squared plus one and then plus multiply this and this that will be two minus x cx plus d and then in the denominator multiply this and that so that will be two minus x and then x squared plus one so since the denominators are the same we are just going to equate the numbers on top. So we are going to say negative 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 should be equal to b x squared plus 1 plus 2 minus x cx plus d. Okay in that man now at this point we know that well we can make this a zero how can we make it a zero by making x being equal to a two so i'll say let x be equal to two so that will mean negative four where there is x i put two squared plus two where there is x two minus one that should be equal to b where there is x is 2 squared plus 1 well this portion is going to become a 0 because of just this 0 here so ne so 2 squared is a 4 and 4 times negative 4 that is negative 16 negative 16 and then here we've got negative 1 that would be negative 17 okay and then we have got a 4 there. So negative 17 plus 4. So that is a 13. Alright. Let me just double check that one. Before we are able to conclude. I might be missing out just something. In my multiplication. Okay. So we have got uh, BX squared plus CX plus D. Okay. And then 2 minus 1. Okay. And so we are saying we need to cancel out 1 by making X being equal to. Alright x should be equal to a 2 that is okay so i don't know what my multiplication if it was wrong then plus 2 yeah i see where i wrote wrong so this is a 1 okay and that is equal to b 2 squared plus 1 okay i think i just wrote what is correct this is a negative 13 so because this is 4 times 4, negative 4, that is a negative 16, minus 1, negative 17, plus 4, negative 13, and that will be equal to 5b. Now divide both sides by 5, 
so b is going to be equal to negative 13 over 5. so we know the value for a a is equal to 2 then you found that b is equal to negative 13 over 5. now to be able to find the value for c and d we need to expand what we have just at this point so say negative 4 x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to b times x squared that would be bx squared b times 1 that would be b then plus 2 times that that would be 2cx and then 2 times that to be positive 2d then negative x by this to be negative cx squared negative x times d to be negative dx then I put like terms together so this is negative 4x squared plus 2x minus 1 is equal to everything is squared I put them together I've got b I've got negative c and then just put x squared outside and then the next one those without with only x I've got 2c and then I've got negative d then put x outside and then the next the constant I've got b and then 2d okay and so to find the value for c this one the b minus c should be equated to what the number in front of x where that is a negative 4 we know that b is negative 13 over 5 then minus c this should be equal to 4 S negative 4 i mean so i can take for this side becomes positive i can take c this side so it becomes positive 4 minus 13 over 5 that is going to be equal to c so therefore c is equal to 4 minus 13 over 5 can multiply these two that is going to be a 20 20 minus 13 that is a 7 divided by 5 so it is 7 over 5 that's the value for c to find the value for d you can either use this or this and we can choose let me use so we are saying 2c minus d the number in front of x should be equal to 2 so 2 we know that c is 7 over 5 then minus d this is supposed to be equal to 2 so 2 in 2 2 times 7 that is 14 over 5 minus d that should be equal to 2 you can take d that side and take 1 this side so what I'm going to have is 14 I mean take to the other side minus 2 is equal to d 14 over 5 minus 2 that is the same as 5 by 2 that is a 20 so 14 minus 20 that is okay 5 by 2 is a 10 not 20 so 14 minus 10 is a 4 over 5 and this is equal to d so this is the value for d this is the value for c and then that's the value for a that's the value for b you can substitute in those values there then we we'll decompose this one into partial fractions thank you so much for watching the video stay blessed